Hi, everyone. I'm David Zuckerman, Lieutenant Governor of Vermont. Welcome back to Music for Vermont, our series to promote and support our Vermont musicians and give folks some entertainment. In today's show, we're joined by uh, Pitts Quattrone, who is a great character and who has a really amazing skill with didgeridoos, a musical instrument that I believe he even carves himself. And he's going to sit down with you and teach you about what a didgeridoo is and play some didgeridoo music for you and your family. What we are trying to do with these shows is organize an opportunity for folks to have entertainment and even to raise a little bit of money for both the musicians and our campaign. Again, these folks are individual performing artists. They can't do their regular shows. And so we're looking for donations from those who can afford it to help out the musicians and ourselves on this campaign. He is a world-renowned master player, um, builder, and teacher of this ancient instrument from Australia. And uh, I really look forward to seeing his show and what he's got to present. So without further ado, Pitts Quattrone. Yes, friends. <laughs> Good morning and welcome. It's Didgeridoo Day here today. <laughs> My name is Pitts Quattrone, and uh, welcome to the uh, David Zuckerman channel. And it's the it's the kids and everyone else who is interested day to day and each Wednesday at 10:30. So first of all, I'd like to thank David Zuckerman and his campaign team for inviting me here today and there's another uh, show tomorrow night at 7.30. I'm going to be doing a, uh, a an episode of Live from the Swamp House with Pitts right here on the same channel. So lots of fun songs. It's going to be chock full of music for an hour tomorrow night, 7.30, same time or same uh, channel. So this morning, though, it is didgeridoo day. <laughs> yes, yeah, a fun instrument from Australia. I'm going to tell you all about that, give you a lot of demonstrations and uh, different things. So I do want to say that I have been supporting uh, David Zuckerman as a politician in every statewide race here in Vermont every time that he's run. So <laughs> it's a total honor to, uh, to be here, and, and thanks again. For that, the first time I met David was about 10 years ago at the Adamant Black Fly Fest. So <laughs> if you're familiar with Adamant, Vermont, it's about 10 miles northeast of downtown Montpelier. A quirky little village home to the Adamant Co-op, the oldest co-op in the state of Vermont, goes back to 1935. And every spring we have a, a Black Fly Festival because if you can't beat them, you might as well join them and celebrate them. And it's a, uh, the big fundraiser for the Adamant Co-op uh, each year. So for more info on the co-op, adamantcoop.org. And those, the website for the David Zuckerman uh, campaign and all the information you need to know, zuckerman4vt.com. And that is Zuckerman, F-O-R, dot uh, f o r v t dot com zuckerman for v t dot com and donations can be made uh, along pretty much throughout the uh, the show today and tomorrow night there's information at the bottom of your screen zuckerman for v t dot com backslash music for v t is the link and that's a 50 50 split half goes to the artist each week and the other 50 percent goes to david's team to produce these virtual events and make sure that that this keeps going on so every thursday night at 7 30 there's a concert every wednesday morning at 10 30 there's a children's show here uh, via david zuckerman and his outstanding team so enough talking <laughs> This instrument, the didgeridoo from Australia. I'm going to tell you all about it, but let's hear it first.
It makes me smile every time I play the didgeridoo, but if I smile too much, then I can't make the sound. So some history about the didgeridoo. Let's say, um, all right, we got Australia. You guys know where Australia is? Here's my handy dandy map of Australia. It's actually the, uh, the size of Australia is actually bigger than the lower 48 of the United States, so gigantic country. So where the didgeridoo is from, here is Alice Springs right smack in the middle, and you go all the way up, here's Darwin, and just east of Darwin is this area, it's called Arnhem Land, that's where the didgeridoo was born. Here's Cockadoo, Cockadoo is also a national park. So check out Arnhem Land when you can. On, actually, Google that in, in, uh, and also Kakadu, K-A-K-A-D-U, Kakadu National Park, the birthplace of the didgeridoo. Yes, sir. So, all right, so it comes from Australia. Okay, we know that, but okay, how is it used? Hmm, originally traditional, action, the didgeridoo, it accompanies stories. Around the fire at nighttime, there's one person either telling a story or singing a story, and then there's a few dancers, three or four, sometimes five dancers, imitating the movements of what's happening in the story, and then there's uh, one, sometimes two, didgeridoo players accompanying the story, and what their job is they imitate the sounds of what's happening in the story, kind of like a, a sound effects machine. They bring the words to life. So whatever is happening in the story, it's the didgeridoo player's responsibility or job to make those sounds. Like if there's a kangaroo in the story, didge player does the kangaroo sound. Which is... So the, uh, the bouncing up and down is when the kangaroo hits the ground and continues on its way. So um, what else can we say? We say didgeridoo. It's a fun word, mm, but it's not really the original word from the native people of Australia. So what happened was the first Europeans who showed up in Australia, they saw this thing for the first time. They never saw it before, never heard it before. So what they did was they made up a name based on the sound of the instrument. That's called automatopoeia. In this case, didgeridoo. So didgeridoo is uh, pretty much, that name is pretty much uh, worldwide now. And some people say didge, I say didge to shorten it down. But depending on where you are in Australia, there's 35 to 40 different names for the didgeridoo in the Aboriginal communities or clans. One uh, original name is Yaraki, Y-I-D-A-K-I, -I, Yaraki. That's a term that's accepted pretty much across the country in Australia for the correct name of the didgeridoo, Yeraki. In some areas, Yeraki means short didgeridoo or mosquito. The short ones are going to be give, give you a higher pitch, the longer ones, deeper, bassier tones, just like any other instrument, any uh, wind instrument there. So, okay, how, hmm, how was this thing Discovered. How was the didgeridoo played for the first time? Who came up with that? 
Well, there's a bunch of different stories, and the one that I like to share is uh, this one, one man at the end of the day, coming up on evening, he's getting ready and preparing for the nighttime fire. So what he was, he was, he was doing was collecting firewood uh, for the fire, and so he picked up this one log, and hmm, what's going on here? Kind of something like this, you know? Hmm, and oh, it's hollow. It's hollow at one end because there's termites crawling up and down, and also on this end, totally hollow. So what happened was he picked it up, and those termites are eating out the center of that tree limb. So native people in Australia, like native people anywhere, want to help all living creatures. We're all related, all the creatures are related, so he didn't want to harm any of his relatives, so he saved them by pushing the termites towards the end and tucking them in. Same thing on this end, push them down, tuck them inside, and then he had to get him out of there somehow. <laughs> so what he did was he looked in there and was like, hmm, look, maybe if I blow in this thing, it'll get him out of there and then I can burn this stick. So what he did was the first didgeridoo sound. So he was, it was successful. All the termites flew out towards the end, flew up into the sky, into space, and formed the Milky Way. I'm going to show you something. It's uh, when the dig maker goes around, wants to make some instruments. Okay, what do you start with? You start with the tree. So here's uh, a photo of Austra an Australian setup here. So the termites eat out the center of a tree limb make their way up and then they go out the branches from inside. So the ditch maker's job is to go around and these trees are eucalyptus and di traditional didgeridoos are made of various types of eucalyptus branches like ironwood or bloodwood. Uh, super dense, hard, thick, heavy, heavy wood. So these termites, if they're making these branches hollow, they're doing a lot of hard work. So the ditch maker's job, he'll go around and, uh, and find the eucalyptus tree and then this. So he knocks on that, and sometimes the the uh, sometimes the termites have not done their work totally. It's not complete yet, so he'll leave that alone and come back in a month and then recheck it. Sometimes it's really gone way too far, and it's too too uh, eaten out from the middle, and the walls are too thin. Not good, but sometimes it's just right. 
So check it out. Here's the inside of my ditch. You can see it there. And here's the other end. Mine has a microphone on it, but natural ones don't. There's that. Okay. So pretty much all it is, structurally, it's a hollowed out tree branch. And anything can be a didgeridoo. Any material can be a didgeridoo as long as it's about four feet long and a certain uh, diameter, like holiday wrapping tubes or mailing tubes, cardboard. Some people use PVC. Uh, I use all natural materials. I make my instruments right here in Vermont. So the traditional way is termites eating out the center of a tree limb. And uh, to give you an example, like this one here, I'm not sure if you can tell what it is, but it's a cardboard tube. <laughs> That's it. It's just a cardboard tube. So check it out. Makes a great sounding ditch. <laughs> Not bad. So if you have a cardboard tube or some plumbing pipe, and if you have your choice between cardboard and plastic, go with the cardboard because the plastic's kind of nasty, but it's a super easy, uh, least expensive way to make your own didgeridoo at home. So natural materials, so that's all I use. I use different types of wood and um, Sunflower stalks make good didgeridoos. Agave, cactus, flower stalks make cool didgeridoos. This one is uh, something that grows uh, right down the road from me here in central Vermont. It's called cow parsnips. And this is nasty, nasty stuff. So I don't recommend doing this. <laughs> but the cool thing is for me, it grows hollow. <laughs> it's totally hollow in one season it goes from ground all the way up to full length and flower top and dies off. But if you touch this stuff or grab it when it's alive, it's really nasty and will burn your hands and do bad things. So what I do is I wait till a few frosts, like mid-November-ish, after it, it, the whole thing dies off. And even then I wear gloves and be very careful, long sleeves, and I, I cut the top off and then I go down to the bottom uh, to where the plant meets the ground and I flatten it out and I cut as close to the ground as possible and then I bring it inside and I let it dry out all winter long. I don't even mess with it till the following spring because it's so nasty. But it makes a great sounding ditch once it's totally seasoned and all the precautions are taken. It's fun time. <laughs> So any hollow tube can be a didgeridoo as long as it's about four feet long and about this wide. <laughs> That's the exact measurement, this wide. <laughs> All right, so what else can be a didge? Ah, how about the old bamboo? The old bamboo, the old bamboo. <laughs> bamboo already grows hollow until pretty much these segments in between, but there's a little line here, a node. With, but that can easily be popped out with a really long drill or some type of stick you jam it through there. This is a piece of bamboo that I cut down in Pennsylvania 20 years ago. Awesome sounding ditch. <laughs> The bamboo ditch. So, um, like I said earlier, just like any other musical instruments, the short, thin pieces or instruments are going to be higher pitched. The longer, wider ones, nice and deep and bassy. That's the ones I really like, but they're the hardest to play didgeridoo wise. So, give you an example of the mosquito ditch, the yaraki. This guy. So 
So you hear how high that almost sounds like a mosquito, right? So, versus my grandpa over here. <laughs> Check out this one. sounds ancient doesn't it sounds like it's coming out from the middle of the planet earth coming up to the surface and projecting to you and grabbing you <laughs> that's what it does for me at least <laughs> all right so what's next <clears throat> we're quickly running through our time segment here that we have this morning so I'm Pitt Squatro um, I'd like to say hello to some of my friends tuning in all my friends, teachers, and students from Union Elementary in Montpelier, Vermont, I hope you guys are tuning in. And also my friends down in Boston at the Advent School, if you guys are tuning in, hello! <laughs> I'm Miss Chelsea's father, <laughs> that's who I am. All right, so again, uh, Zuckerman4VT.com, and that's Zuckerman the name, F-O-R-V-T.com is the website. And I'm going to be, tomorrow night, I'll be back here right on the same channel, uh, playing a lot of songs, all kinds of drums and really cool percussion stuff with the didgeridoo. Some of them are my songs, some of them are other people's songs that I kind of change around and mold into my own thing. So that's tomorrow night at 7.30. That's uh, unofficially called Live from the Swamp House with Pits on the Zuckerman 4 VT channel. <laughs> all right, so... Now, we come to how in the world do you get a sound out of this thing? <laughs> what makes the sound? Well, my friends, it all starts with your lips. So, the lips are inside the didgeridoo, and what are they doing? Well, they're flapping around. And what they do is this, nice and loosely. Try that. <laughs> I can hear everyone flapping and getting spit on your computer screens. That's cool. <laughs> it's part of the fun. So, nice and loose and slow. That's how that works. And what that does, you put your lips all the way in there, all the way inside so there's no air flying out the sides or anywhere else. All the air is going through your lips, flapping, to give you the initial drone. So that's all I'm doing inside. So when you start playing didgeridoo, your first goal is to get that drone nice and steady because that's your foundation of the sound. Much like a foundation for your house, you got to lay that foundation down for the sound on the didge, and once you have that, then we can start adding really cool things. And some, the first thing you do, at least that I like to do, and I teach folks, I teach folks didgeridoo on Skype and Zoom and FaceTime in person as well, but in these times, everything's online. So, the first goal again, and I play in the middle. Some people play on one corner or this corner. Whatever works for you, whatever feels comfortable and you get the best tone, that's your spot. Don't let anyone tell you you have to play on one side or the other or the middle. I play in the middle, that works for me. I stay there. So, I got the didge going, or the lips going. Give me that drone. Okay, cool, I got that. That's my foundation. So, what do I do now? Okay, step one. You start moving your tongue around inside your mouth, forward and back. That changes the amount of air inside your mouth, affecting the pitch coming out of the ditch, either high or low. You move your tongue forward, it makes it higher. You move it back, it goes nice and low. Check it out. And my hand will represent my tongue inside my mouth moving. 
Pretty cool. <laughs> so you can spend countless hours and years just with this one effect. <laughs> Moving that back and forth. So again, uh, going back to uh, the beginning of the show, the kangaroo. Okay, let's make the kangaroo sound. When he hops or she hit, hits the ground, that's when your tongue moves forward. So it's like this. That could probably also be a rabbit. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are running out of time, but I want to keep going. There's a lot of cool information I want to share with you guys, so if you want to hang with me, please do so. All right, so traditionally, old school, very from the beginning, and no one really knows how old the didgeridoo is. Some say 1,500 years, others say 100,000 years. So it's, it's really old. There's rock caves in Australia and rock walls of illustrations of people and animals playing the didgeridoo. And some dating processes, they kind of uh, guess that it's about between 20 and 40,000 years old. No one really knows, but it's really old. And I've been told by Mickey Hart himself that the didgeridoo is the oldest instrument after the human voice. So if Mickey Hart says it, it's true, because that guy is a scientist and a wizard. So, all right, so what else can we do with that tongue movement? Your lips are flapping, tongue is moving. So what you can do is imitate the sound of a mosquito. Again, another flying insect. There's lots of insects flying around. So that's really fast, the tongue moving very fast. So if there's that mosquito in the story, Dage player does that sound. Another one that's really cool, it's my favorite, is uh, it's nice and slow and it represents the ocean or a wave coming up on the shore. It goes all the way that it can reach and then back to the ocean. And once it gets, once it gets all the way forward, all the way up, that's your tongue moving forward and then it comes back nice and slow. Check it out. Okay, then the other thing you can do is rhythms. So your tongue is moving. A really common rhythm is a three, two, which is like uh, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two. So I'm not gonna count with my voice. I'm gonna move my tongue in that same rhythm. So that's just an example of one rhythm. You can, it's endless. So you can play any rhythm. You can make some stuff up as you go along. Okay, all kinds of cool stuff. All right, the next thing you can do, hmm, what's, uh, how about, what is my voice doing during this whole thing? Ooh, maybe I can put my voice through. Uh, my lips are flapping, that's going to happen, that's going to keep going for as long as you want. As long as you want to make a sound on the ditch, your lips are flapping. And after you get good at it, you don't even think about it, they're just doing their thing. Then my voice comes through. Traditional sound is a dingo, a wild dog. It's basically a dog barking out in the outback, so if there's a dingo in the story, ditch player does the dingo sound. And it's without my lips, without the dig, it's woof, 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 woof. With my lips, woof, 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 woof. Try that.
Go bark. <laughs> Alright, so the next one is the sound of a donkey. Wild donkeys running around the outback. So the classic donkey sound with your voice. With the lip slapping. And through the ditch. Is cool. <laughs> All right, so the next one that I like to talk about, and these are all traditional sounds. They've been going on for thousands and thousands of years. The next one is the kookaburro. It's a bird comes down, you know, swoops down in the, from the old gum tree and grabs the mongoose. So uh, the kookaburro. <laughs> Check him out. Oh yeah. So we got the dingo, we got the donkey, we got the kookaburro. Okay, well what else can I do? Those are old sounds and I love those sounds and I work them in whenever I can. But anything you can do with your mouth or your voice, you can do through the didgeridoo. You can talk through the didge. You can sing through the didge. Check this out. So, I'll say, hello, how are you? Through the didgeridoo. So, it's, hello, how are you? And then my lips, hello, how are you? In the didge. So anything you anything can come up with with your voice through the ditch, sing through the ditch. I'll say uh, happy birthday, and I'll make it. I'll say I'll say it's Miss Chelsea's birthday today. <laughs> I'll say happy birthday, Miss Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. So you can sing any song you want to, and you can make stuff up, have a lot of fun, and that's the best things that I come up with are totally by accident, by experimenting, exploring different sounds. <laughs> So it's, it's unlimited what you can do. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is, so you guys see me playing for a few minutes sometimes, right? I'm playing, playing, I'm not stopping, I don't have to pull it away and get some air. I'm not doing that. What I'm doing is I'm breathing while I play. Really cool. So that allows me to keep going for as long as I want. I can play for an hour, two hours, whatever. Whatever I want to do for as long as I want to, I can play the didgeridoo because I'm breathing while I play. So that breathing thing, a lot of people call it circular breathing. So what happens is I'm, I'm playing the didg with my lips, right? Cruising along. Eventually, I'm going to need some air for my lungs to breathe, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to pass out. So I get my lips going. And kind of a, a little while before I actually need the air, I catch some air in my cheeks on its way out, and the cheeks get puffed out. And with my cheeks, I squeeze in to force that amount of air out. Okay, just that little bit of air in my cheeks keeps my lips flapping for a second or two. So I'm not actually breathing out, I'm just emptying my mouth with the cheek muscles. 
So I empty that, and that keeps my lips going for just a second or two. That's my chance to breathe up my nose for my lungs. It all happens at the same time. So the, the cheeks are first, and then what happens at the same time is the exchange. So your cheeks puff out first, they're ready, they're ready to go, they're all set up, and then once the cheeks start squeezing in, as soon as you start squeezing your cheeks in, that's when you breathe up your nose, and it happens really fast, it's like this. I'll come closer. So that circular breathing thing, it's like this. Your cheeks are puffed out, and then they're ready to go, so what happens is you start squeezing the cheeks in, and then once that happens, you start breathing up your nose. And you do it two or three, four times in a row. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna play for you again, and I want you to pay attention to when my cheeks puff out just before you hear the air go up my nose. And I'll do it two or three, four times. Here we go. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? When I'm done, I'm not out of air. I keep going for as long as I want to. Not too shabby. <laughs> All right, so that thing is called circular breathing, and that's the hardest uh, aspect. We can do all these basic sounds in one breath, and it doesn't matter how long that one breath is. If it's three seconds or 30 seconds, totally cool. We can work on the foundational sounds, the basic stuff in that one breath, and then way down the road, we can talk about circular breathing, kind of like a Band-Aid uh, connecting those breaths so it's one long piece of music. Pretty cool. <laughs> and everything we do along the way, uh, exercises with the cheeks and the voice and, and your throat muscles, all that prepares you for the circular breathing. And that's a whole other thing. So um, my name is Pitts Quattrone, P-I-T-Z-Q-U-A-T-T-R-O-N-E, PittsQuattrone.com. Check out my website. There's all kinds of stuff, and if you want some lessons on Zoom or FaceTime, we can do that. Just uh, contact me through that, and I think we might, you know, I just wrote a, I wrote a new song last week, and I want to play it for you guys, because it's very timely what's happening in the world right now. Um, do -do 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 -do. Let me just get my gizmo correct here. So one more time, I want to thank uh, David Zuckerman for having me here on the, the channel for the, uh, the, the children's series and everyone else who wants to tune in. It's not just for kids, <laughs> at least what I do. <laughs> Didgeridoo is for everyone. I've taught little kids up to senior citizens and everyone in between. And you can make a donation and it goes 50-50, 50% to the artists. In my, my case, this case, I am the artist today. And the other 50% goes to David Zuckerman's team to produce these virtual events and ensure that they're making all the content available for uh, the public, whoever wants to check it out online virtually. Yeah. So check out that, it's uh, the donation. Again, it's Zuckerman4VT.com and that 4VT is the words V or uh, F-O-R-V-T.com and then backslash music for VT. So that takes care of that. Hopefully that's flashing around to the, the bottom of the screen. 
So I want to leave you guys with a number that uh, I think you can, I'm going to teach you the chorus and we'll see if we can all do it together. And uh, I'm going to play this one tomorrow night as well. But I wanted to play it for you today because it's a lot of good information and it's, it's fun. So there's a few things that we should be doing uh, during this pandemic virus thing that's going around the world to keep it at bay, to uh, protect yourself as much as possible. So they are washing your hands, wearing a mask, and sanitizing your hands with the hand sanitizer. So washing, masking, and sanitizing. I'm washing, I'm masking, I'm sanitizing. So here we go for that one. So remember that chorus. It's going to come around a bunch of times in the song. I want you to sing it with me, and then we'll sing it again tomorrow night, 7.30, right here, same channel. Let's see if I can get this going. All right, my friends, here we go. <clears throat> the name of the tune is COVID Chorus. <laughs> it's, a fun, it's a fun song, but it's also uh, helpful information. I'm washing, I'm masking, I'm sanitizing, washing, masking, a sanitizing. A new day, a different way that we move along. Doing my part, hear my heart, help me sing this song. I'm washing, I'm masking, I'm sanitizing, washing, masking, I'm sanitizing. Change the scene, you know what I mean, to get through the day. We all make do, me and you, live in this new way. I'm washing, I'm masking, I'm sanitizing. Washing, masking, I'm sanitizing. I'm masking, I'm sanitizing, washing, masking, I'm sanitizing. A new day, a different way that we move along. Doing my part, hear my heart, help me sing this song. I'm washing, I'm masking, I'm sanitizing, washing, masking, I'm sanitizing, I'm washing, I'm masking. I'm sanitizing, washing, masking, I'm sanitizer, yeah. singing out there. Alrighty, so COVID Chorus, Pit Squatron, thank you David Zuckerman and his fantastic team. I will see you guys tomorrow night. And again, if you want to make a donation, it is Zuckerman4VT.com backslash music for VT. I'm Pit Squatron. Thanks so much for tuning in, friends. I'll see you tomorrow night. At 7.30, tell your friends and neighbors, because we're coming at you with some fun music tomorrow night, live from the Swamp House with Pits. Thank you.